So today I got something really cool from Ubiquity. So Ubiquity's Dream Machine Pro was back in stock and I was lucky enough to go ahead and snag one. So let's unbox it and let's crack it open. That's interesting. It was uh, shipped via FedEx, but yet there's a UPS packing slip inside. <laughs> All right, so this should be the mounting hardware. Got the power cable here, and this here is the mounting hardware. And then we have the two ears that go on it and a little manual. So let's pull this out. And they include a nice Unify Protect, looks like uh, stickers or decals here. I guess they are pretending that you can actually buy their cameras online at MSRP. Only time will tell. But until then, I run Blue Iris with RTSP compatible cameras. So here we go. Here is the LCD screen on the front. You can place a hard drive in here for NVR storage. And then you've got eight gigabit ports here. And then you have a one gig uh, uplink for your WAN and also a SFP plus. And right here, there is a uh, 10 gig WAN link and below that is a 10 gig uplink. So let's take it apart, shall we? Now just remember, I avoid my warranty so you don't have to. So make sure you slap that like button if you haven't already and subscribe. Looks like there are three screws here on the back as well. Now, if you're not familiar with Ubiquiti's equipment, Ubiquiti offers a product lineup called Unify. And that is where everything basically all works together as a single system. So the Wi-Fi, the router and switch, you can see them all in a single pane of glass. It looks like I might have to actually take off the front face plate as well. So it looks like you want to take out the plugs for the SFP ports first after you get all the screws out. There we go. And it's just a friction fit. Wonder what this mark is right here for. All right, so here we have the uh, heat sink and fan right here. Got the heat sink on, from what I researched, it looks like that this is the main processor on here. Got another fan to go ahead and cool the drive, which is cool. And here we have the power supply. And here we have a chip that goes ahead and powers the front display and probably some other things as well. So what's interesting is that if you look right here, you have slots for uh, air and right here, there's a nice channel, although that looks like it's glued together. But anyways, that allows for some nice smooth airflow just by the design of the chassis itself. Now here on the inside, I'm going to take some pictures and put them up on the screen for you guys. It looks like there is a Theros chipset here. I'm not sure what chip is here. Is the AR8033 TAC AL1A. And it looks like that this particular chip sells for $6 on eBay. And it is a three channel 10101 gigabit. And this chip can handle up to gigabit speeds. Let's see what else we can find in here. And we got the G24103SKG, which is listed as a network transformer. Filter, SMD, DIP, and SOP. Now these four here are the G50206SNG. And it appears that each one is a 1000 base T single port magnetics module. Now let's see if we can find something more interesting. Now this chip here is the KLMAG1JET. 
D chip, which I found on eBay for $3 and AliExpress for $6.22. It is a Samsung eMMC that stores 16 gigabytes of storage, and it is eMMC version 5.1. And this chip right here is a GL3224E, which is a USB 3.1 Gen 1 eMMC reader controller. So this is the controller to be able to talk to the 16 gig of storage that is right here that's made by Samsung. Now this here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but here's a little antenna up here and that connects right down to here. Let me see if I can get a picture of this for you guys. And that little tiny chip here is the CSR 8811 by Qualcomm which is a Bluetooth 4.2 chipset by Qualcomm. It's a single chip radio and baseband IC for consumer electronics devices. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put all 16 screws back into this and put it back together and plug it in. Hopefully it'll turn on. Now, you might be asking why on earth would I be taking this apart when the thing is freaking brand new? And that is a valid question. Not only for making a video, which I think is kind of obvious, but I had a Dell laptop of somebody's that from day one, it was always running kind of loud and they've used it for years. And all of a sudden it just started to go ahead and shut down automatically. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So I went ahead and cracked it open and sure enough, there was actually a piece of tape over the processor between the processor and the heat sink. And I'll go ahead and if I can find that picture, throw it up on the screen here. And I did reach out to Dell about it and they pretty much just swept it under the rug because the system was quote unquote out of under warranty. Now that is true, but I wanted them to be aware of what actually was wrong with the system because it was sounding like a jet was taking off whenever you would turn the thing on and then all of a sudden it started to just shut itself down because of uh, thermal errors where it was running too hot so since then i've pretty much cracked open all of my expensive toys just to make sure that they're assembled properly at the factory now this was a laptop that is pre-covid so what the heck is your excuse Dell? i'm calling you out on it Seriously, you've ignored me on Twitter. And even when I call up support, just get the runaround with uh, people that are overseas. So it's not worth the fight since I went ahead and did fix it. And all I did was carefully remove the tape off of the processor, cleaned it up with isopropyl rubbing alcohol and removed all of the uh, dried thermal paste. And after removing the thermal paste, waited for it to dry and then just went ahead and put it all back together and it never overheated again. The moral of this story or the takeaway is to go ahead and if you are okay with taking apart your electronics and you're competent in disassembling and reassembling everything and still having it work afterwards, this might be something that you may want to do. But again, it just depends on whoever was putting together whatever at the factory on if they did a good job on it or not. Was it on a Monday? Was it on a Friday? Or did they even know what day it was? I'm down to just a couple more screws. I got a question for you. Have you had new equipment that was improperly assembled at the factory? And if so, what was it? Drop a comment down below. Down to the very last screw. There we go. And this is a uh, USB connect connector, which is for a, uh, basically it's DC in from a USB connect power source or power supply. And then you have your standard AC right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put these back on. Wish I had 10 gig internet. That would be awesome. But Cox struggles to deliver 940 megabits down and 35 up and doesn't offer anything faster in a residential plan. And even if I pay for a quote unquote business plan, it still has the same mediocre performance. Sure, 940 down is great, but a lot of web servers don't have that fast of a connection anyway, so it's not going to really make much of a difference to most people. So next, I'm going to install the ears on this and get it installed in my rack. Subscribe so you don't miss that.